Smart automation, better business. Learn how to optimize your business with Solved. Hello, I'm Parker, and I'm a Salesforce consultant at Solved, where I specialize in helping businesses like yours leverage Salesforce Revenue Cloud and maximize the revenue potential. In today's fast-paced market, businesses are constantly looking for ways to enhance the customer experience, drive sales, and streamline their operations. One powerful strategy that addresses these needs is product bundling. By offering complementary products together in a single package, businesses can provide added value, simplify the purchasing process, and increase their average order value. This approach not only benefits customers by offering convenience and potential cost savings, but also enables businesses to optimize their inventory, improve sales forecasting, and boost overall revenue. In this video, we'll walk you through the process of creating a product bundle in Revenue Cloud. We'll explore key concepts and demonstrate how to manage them for maximum impact. Let's jump in. Let's start with the basics. In Revenue Cloud, bundled products are a group of products sold together as one unit. This strategy can increase order value, simplify the sales process, and provide customers with a convenient all-in-one solution. Revenue Cloud offers two types of bundles, static and configurable. Static bundles are fixed. You can't change the child products or their quantities. Configurable bundles, on the other hand, offer flexibility. Customers can add or remove products, change quantities, and customize attributes. Before we jump into creating bundles, let's cover the setup. First, ensure that Revenue Cloud has been set up for your Salesforce org. We have another video that talks about the setup and what is required for enabling Revenue Cloud. Please refer to that. We also need to make sure that we have set up product catalog management and product specification types and record types prior to this. When it comes to bundles and configuration, you want to make sure that you have appropriate permissions. So you want to make sure you have the product configurator permission, permission set license, and that you're a product configuration user. You also want to come into the revenue settings themselves and make sure that you have allowed for product configurator, as this will allow you to configure bundles as we talk about dynamic bundles. Okay, now let's go ahead and create the bundle. There's a few specific things that we need to fill out. With a normal product, you wanna make sure you have a name, a product code, that it's active. One specific thing to make sure you have set is the product type. The product type needs to be set to bundle, as this is gonna help make sure that we can configure it as a bundle parent, like in all of these other elements. This configure during sale helps identify if we're gonna have a static bundle or a dynamic bundle. We have the allowed allow, allows you to configure, not allowed prevents the configuration. Once we have this product created, we can then move on to creating the individual bundle children. On the product screen, there is now a new tab called structure. This structure allows you to see the whole bundle structure. In this case, we have to add a few components to make sure that we can move forward. The first thing we wanna do is make sure that we have a product group. When we click this plus button, we'll see that we can add a component and we have to add a product group. Once clicked on, you can say, identify what the group is. We're gonna say that this is group. You can add any additional information that you need here. You can even identify the number of components that are available. In this case, we're going to keep it pretty simple. Have this be our only group. This we'll go ahead and click save. We now get brought to the product component group screen here. You can go in and add the child components and add the products and classes as needed here. But what makes this structure so much more useful is that we can come back here, click this plus button and have the same option. So in this case, we're gonna add a product. We'll get a list of our products and what, what are available. In this case, I'm gonna choose our admin certification. We already created this bundle prior, or we then have some specific component details that we choose. 
we need to choose what the sequence is. In this case, we want it to be the first product. It's going to be in group A. Do we want to require this component? We're going to make this one be required. Include component by default. That means it's going to be selected. Allow quantity changes. We actually aren't going to allow quantity changes, which will, which makes this min and max quantity no longer needed. You can even specify the beginning or default quantity for the product. Once you click save, you'll then see that now we have an admin certification under this group. I can go ahead and add another product if I want. I'm going to choose antivirus. In this one, we want to be able to allow quantity changes, not require this product, but have a max quantity of four. Great. Now we have this product set up. Okay, now that we have the septless product, there are a few things we want to make sure are done before we can actually access it within the browse catalogs, unquote. We want to make sure that it has a price book entry, and that price book entry is associated with the product selling model. We have a, a few other videos that outline how products can be set up, what product selling models are. Please refer to those if you have any questions or drop a comment with any additional questions below. This product has been set up. We've assigned it to the training category within the service catalog. You can see that we have this bundle parent. We can go in and click configure. We can see that we have group A. This is again that product grouping. You can see the products that are available within that. We have the admin certification, which is added by default and not, don't have the ability to remove it. And antivirus is selected but can be removed and has its quantity editable. One additional point that I want to show that is great with being able to configure bundles is having product classifications. So instead of specifying specific products, you can have a product classification. In this, in this case, I've added for group B, the printer classification. We only have one product within this classification, but this allows you to select that product and add it as a specific item within this, within this bundle. And in this case, this would be similar to if you have experience with Salesforce CPQ, the ability to select products. So if you don't want them inherently on the bundle, you can go ahead and add a classification that allows for a little bit more customization during bundle configuration. Great, now that we've gone over bundles, there are a few additional items that are very helpful to understand when working with bundles. One of those is pricing. We're gonna be providing another video shortly about how bundle specific pricing can be set up. Appreciate you listening to us today. And I hope that with the information we provided, you can set up effective bundles that will help you enhance your selling process and increase customer satisfaction. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. We can't wait to help you automate your business. Please like, comment, or subscribe for more.